Hey guys! How you doing? It's Wolf Dead Podcast time! Everybody get in. Everybody get in. Sit down. Sit down! Hi. How you doing? How you doing, Will? I am nowhere in the center of the frame. That's me. It's my... Uh, it's a little you. You're a little <laughs> off frame. How but, am I... Uh, all right. We can we can we can right. we can help you a little. We can help. There you go. You. Okay. Yeah. There's like there's black bars on top. Get, I, get I'm fixing today. it. It's fixing. <laughs> How you doing? We don't have these kind of problems on the Nintendo podcast. I see. No, and that's what makes this more charming. <laughs> uh, also, we times. pay we pay people so we don't have these problems. <laughs> Although we still have problems. People are, yeah. people keep complaining about the sound of the TV on the Nintendo podcast. How can they hear that? I don't hear it. I don't know. I I I somebody complained and I was like, "You hear it in this clip, right?" They responded to a clip yeah. and I was like, "You hear it in this clip?" And they're like, "Yeah." I was like, "I don't, know. Hmm. I don't understand." Anyway, uh, hi. Oh, wow. You might hear a lot hey. of mouth sounds, weird stuff, and no cuts because this is the Wolf Den <laughs> podcast. That's right. And we give significantly less of a shit here. Yes. But uh, you love it anyway. Yes. Anyway, hello, everybody. Special hello, hello to uh, Kikobo, who subscribed for 38 months and said, when will you both bend to public demand and start the touring trombone champ brother band we all know we need? Also, Air Fryer. He just said the word Air Fryer. Yes, he did. Um, I think it's because... Neither one of us are up on our trombone playing. No. So. We've quit uh, music ever since the incident. So. Yes. <laughs> we can't. We can't do that. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. It's episode 100 of, of the Wolf Den oh, podcast. Yes. Uh, I've, and yeah. we've prepared absolutely nothing. <laughs> because And, you know, like looking at like the episode numbers, like I'm like, oh, 100 is coming up. We should do something about that. I know. I said that for like five weeks to myself. And now here it is. Yay. Surprise. Uh, well, we, we could say it's the special New York Comic Con uh, oh. episode because we will be there on Thursday of this yes. week. <laughs> Last week, we started a whole, we, we, we did a whole little diatribe about how uh, uh, Reed Pop is taking over E3 and, and, yes. and we were complaining about uh, how much of a pain the ass it is to get Comic Con tickets. Here's Will's Comic Con pass yes <laughs> that i got all right here's here's my story i got to the javits center today saw a huge line estimated it looked like it was about an hour line and i was like i don't want to wait on that so i went to the front and i asked the little well i opened the door and of course the security yeah. guy stopped me and was like what are you doing and i was like is this the line for the for the professional badges and he goes i believe so and then somebody on the line said yes <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, now people on the line are going to get mad if, if. Yeah. So I, 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 I heard them and then I stood there for a minute anyway. And I just looked at the, the, like, I guess like the, uh, like, 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 you know, like the area where they have the different, it says like will call exhibitor and then yeah. some other stuff. And I couldn't really see professional badge. So I went, I went to the back of the line and went on the line for an hour. Then I got to the front <laughs> And once you get inside, there's a whole nother line. It's like a little snake in line. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's deceptively big. So on that line, as a security guy was walking around going, uh, this is only for if you need to pick up a badge, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, is this for the professional? Or, or it? I saw an area that's an industry. And I was like, I looked on my phone. I was like, that's the same as professional, isn't it? Yeah. So I looked at, I, I talked to him and I was like, is this a line for industry or professional? He goes, I don't know. Ask them. <laughs> so I just walked over and I went right to the front of the industry line and just and and got your badge, which was also a pain in the ass. They originally didn't want to give it to me because I'm not you. And I was like, I said I can have it. And I was just, yeah. I was trying to be as nice as I could because I knew <laughs> I waited online for a while. I yeah. I knew my fate was in their hands. So they were like, uh, uh, you have to be Will if you're going to pick up this badge. I was like, there was a mistake. They sent it to the wrong house. They told him I could pick it up. And they're like, do you have it in writing? And I was like, I have it in writing. I'm sure it's in writing somewhere. I have his yeah. QR code. They said, that's not good enough. And I was like, they, they said, do you have a text message? So I handed them my phone. They passed uh -huh. my phone to three different people. And I watched them scroll through 
a lot of our text messages with each other. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, way too many. Yeah. And I just stood there. Oh, man. I just said they're smiling. You should have said I have the email from them saying I do too. You you, you fucking sent it to me. Uh, it it it's just absolutely uh friggin uh, uh th- 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 there's always an issue. Yeah. Oh, and also always. you bought a badge. So at yeah. first they're like this you is need to be a badge. This is the fir- badge I bought with yes, my money. At first, they're like, you need to be on the other line because you have a regular badge. And I was like, no, he bought two badges. This is for the other badge. Yeah. Anyway. It worked uh, out. I, we got it. Yeah. They called like 14 different people over, and eventually they figured it out. Uh, and they were telling me all of the issues that could have possibly go wrong that I don't give a shit about. It's their problem. <laughs> they're the ones who made yeah. the issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't make people sign up for a stupid fan verification account before they can buy a ticket. They sent it to buttholes. the wrong address, but uh, yeah. y- you probably put the wrong address. It's the, it's the problem. No, I, I checked at least three times to make sure I had the right address. And they well, screwed up they something put it on there. a very different town. That's weird. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Well, anyway. Well, Anyway, thank you for doing that. Uh, do they know who get... you are? I actually almost pulled a do you know who I am? I cuz <laughs> cuz I was like that's my brother, it's the same last name. And then yeah. they were like uh, it seemed like they weren't going to let me do it and I said and then I said I also own the company that he applied under if that matters. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> cuz I was like what other uh, proof do you need? I can give you all the proof you want. I'm the one who fucking approved this in the first place. So dumb, but I was very nice. I was very nice to the yeah. whole thing. Anyway, uh, we should probably do a podcast, shouldn't we? Uh, yeah, we I want to guess. talk about Mario's ass for a large portion of this because uh, yes, we, we finally that, got that a, is big news. We got a, or it's depend. I mean, depends on your perspective, Will, because yeah. uh, <laughs> it's like kind of two dimensional news. Um, yeah, we uh, finally got a little bit of a taste of the Mario mm-hmm. movie. Uh, also, we want to talk about Stadia's being dead. Yes. Uh, Razer has a new handheld, so so does mm-hmm. Logitech, which we talked about before. Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, but before we do any of that, we have to talk about, uh, the games you can get with your subscription services. That's right, because it's now October. It's fall, children. Um, and Sony and Microsoft are giving you free games if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. Yes. Yes. Uh, so starting today, um, Sony released their free games for PlayStation Plus Essentials. These are games available on every tier of PlayStation Plus. Uh, and that includes Hot Wheels Unleashed for the PS4 and PS5, Injustice 2 on the PS4, and Super Hot on the PS4. That's pretty good. Yes, this is a good listing. Injustice 2, pretty good. Uh, that's been Justice pretty cheap 2, for a while. Very right? good game. Uh the DLC is often on sale. So if you get it now, if you miss this game, get it now and then when the DLC goes on sale, get it cuz then you can play as the Ninja Turtles. The entire game is $5 on Steam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I knew it was relatively also- cheap. I should also know that it is frequently the game itself is frequently on sale for yeah. very little money. So I wouldn't say that's a good deal. No, but uh, super hot. I mean that was that's been a place that's been an Xbox. Yes, that was an Xbox game. Before. But yeah, uh, but now super the other great. Uh, and Hot Wheels Unleashed oddly has like a pretty big cult following. Like this was very popular when it when it launched back um, not too long ago. Mm-hmm. It isn't so, uh, isn't super hot a VR game? Does it is this is this not the VR version? This is not the VR one. The VR one is separate. Interesting. Okay, yes. I didn't know that. Um. Well, it's um, a great game. It's worth. It's yes, worth uh, either way. It's turn worth it on your PlayStation. For I would say, hands down, two out of the three games are worth playing, but all three are worth checking out at least once. I would say. Okay. Uh, and then I, I hear <laughs> great things coming from the Xbox side. So, um, we should note that last month, September was the last month that they would be offering Xbox 360 games with games okay. of gold. 
So going forward, it's just Xbox One or I guess now Series X games. And it's only two a month. Could have fooled uh, me. And, and this month got some bangers. Uh, for the entire month of October, you get Windbound. And from the 16th to November 15th, it's Bomber Crew Deluxe Edition. These do not seem like uh, modern games. No, these do not seem like so, something's, fun games. Something's up here. I know. I don't. It's really sad. Like, I shouldn't say that. Like, just because these are like lower budget games, indie games, like doesn't mean they're bad. Doesn't no. mean they're lesser games. Isn't super but, hot an indie game? Yeah. But, but like there there's no like big name game to like make this worthwhile. You no, know, not at all. Like, it should have been for the first game for for the first games with gold that doesn't have Xbox 360 games. They should have started yeah. with a banger. Like like we're not expecting them to give away Halo every month, but like something like work with your partners like give us you give us skyrim for free you know that's all everybody already owns it if you just at least like offer that that's true. a big deal true that would be a huge deal yeah uh here's a footage of windbound i guess trying to be like a wind waker type deal i'm only saying that because it's an adventure game and yeah. there's a boat <laughs> i'm getting breath of the wild vibes just because there's a lot oh. of uh, the yeah there you go, Paraglider. Yeah. So yeah. if you only own an Xbox console and you want to know what Breath of the Wild is all about, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And this will be exactly like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, that's a horrible showing from Xbox. Yeah. But I guess we got games coming to Game Pass. Yes, um, and actually pretty good showing for a Game Pass. Available today is Chivalry 2. Um this is a multiplayer first person uh, medieval slasher. <laughs> so it's basically oh, okay. uh it's basically Fortnite but with uh horses and swords and armor. <laughs> Instead of like a sci-fi shooter. Right, right. Yeah. Um and coming soon we have more medieval stuff, Medieval Destiny, uh The Walking Dead seasons 1 and 2 for PC. Um Costume Quest for console and cloud. Uh, Evil, uh, Dyson Sphere, Scorn. Uh, Scorn is an atmospheric first-person horror adventure game set within a nightmarish universe of odd forms and somber tapestry. I believe heard that's, of this a, game before. that's a Quake-like, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. A Plague Tale and, Requiem, um, pe people, people. Yes, like that. October eighteenth. A Plague Tale Requiem. This game, I would like if I had Game Pass, I would be. Oh, this is the new one. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's interesting. A Plague Tale Requiem. This is the sequel to A uh, Plague Tale Innocence. Um, this this game is looks really good. This is the medieval or Dark Ages, Dark Ages stealth action game where you play as a brother and sister trying to avoid plague rats. And uh, knights. <laughs> uh, knights. Yeah, because like, it like takes place in, in the dark. Oh no! Oh. I thought you were knights. saying the game knights. I was like, yes. what? You have to you have to avoid the Sega Saturn classic knights into dreams. It's just a flying disc all over the place. Now, last month was a game called Moon Scars, which I think yes. just came out. So uh, that's worth checking out. It looks like a 2D sort of Dark mm -hmm. Souls type deal. And that, that's something that I want to check out. Um, anyway, I think it's only fair. We talk about the PlayStation Premium games because it's PlayStation Plus Premium games. But I don't think they released it yet. Here's a full list of games for October 2022, according to oh. PlayStationLifestyle.net. Well, okay. That shut uh, me up. I mean, I don't know how accurate this website is. I've never heard of this well, website are before. These, are these the new games or? Uh, let's read, shall we? Okay. Uh, there are then 80 games only available in the Americas and there are 12 games only available in Europe, although this could be said to change, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we're not sure whether this is just temporary glitch or permanent. Also, both Dead or Alive 5 and the PlayStation 3 version of Dead or Alive 5 last round have been removed from the PlayStation Plus list and from the PlayStation Store altogether. 
Aside from this, there haven't been any surprise changes ready for the start of October. However, the list of PlayStation Plus Premium games is set to change throughout the month. Both Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare will be leaving PlayStation Plus Premium. Oh, they started the friggin' article with Red Dead. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess we're getting Red Dead. But yeah. no, we're losing nope, Red you're Dead. Lo- you're losing it. You can find the full list of PlayStation Plus Premium games for October below. Uh, classic games. We got Ape Escape for PS4 and 5. That's been out already. PlayStation Classic Games in the Americas and Europe. Wait, Ape Escape? Like the original Ape Escape? Because I played that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think these... Yeah, because Siphon Filter is already on there. Yeah, they didn't They didn't release what's going to come in October yet. This website sucks. <laughs> this website just lied. Yeah. Oh, this is literally no. This is literally every game that's on yeah. it already. Okay. Yes, they haven't announced what's coming in October yet for PlayStation Shitty Plus website. Can Premium I down and this website. Extra. Um, but stay tuned to the Wolf Den podcast, and we will tell you. Website wouldn't even let me X out. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean. I guess what we should do is thank some more subscribers like yeah. Concrete Clouds for two months, Jag Racer for the two months. Love the content. Moist. Thanks, dude. CJ Gabriel likes for the 21 months. Should I play Metroid Fusion before watching the 2D, 2.5D version of Boss Baby on my air fryer? You should watch it while air frying some nice Brussels sprouts. You have to play nice Boss Baby play in the background. From the yeah. Game Pass subscription in order to understand what air frying means. Um, yeah, exactly. All right, it's time. It's it's time to do a full deep dive. Uh, okay, into, into Mario's ass. Yes, get in. That ba- you thought Bowser's inside story was fun. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay, uh, Nintendo has announced a Nintendo Direct presentation to reveal the first trailer for the Super Mario Brothers movie and has unveiled a poster with tons of tiny details to pour over. Coinciding with its appearance at New York Comic Con, Nintendo will begin a live stream at 105 Pacific, uh, 405 Eastern, and 905 UK. It's not clear if the Direct will simply consist of the trailer or if it will add further information. One thing Nintendo is clear on is that it won't feature any gaming news. I'm curious also. So here's the thing. It says 05. Like it, 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 here yeah. in, in New York, it'll be 405. Presumably, I thought, so I thought it would be at the end of the panel because the panel for this movie at New York Comic Con starts at four. And right. I thought they would show the panel at the end or the, the trailer at the end. And then it would immediately go live. So like around five. But it seems like they're probably going to start with the trailer. Well, and then it'll go live at four oh five, or or what they what they could do is they could start. Uh, the the direct can start with information about the movie, like behind the scenes stuff, interviews with the cast and the crew, um, and then show the trailer at the end of the direct. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, with the panel, it would be a discussion with like the filmmakers and maybe like. Uh, Keegan Michael Key or whatever, and then at the end of the panel, it syncs up with the direct, and they both show the trailer at the same time. See, I think that this direct is gonna have like it doesn't it doesn't say how long the direct's gonna be. Right. I think this direct is literally gonna be the teaser trailer, and that's it. I don't think there's gonna be anything else. I don't know. I feel like they would have they have to show something. They have you know just like. Hi, I'm what's his name from Illumination, and I'm working with Shigeru Miyamoto on this new Super Mario Brothers movie. We've been working hard for the past ten years to try and get this movie to be the movie you want it to be. I and then you'll hi, I'm Chris Pratt. Everybody used to love me, but now they don't anymore. Uh, I'm Mario. Sorry, (laughs) I'm not even convinced this is a live stream. I think this will be a premiere. This will, I think, this will literally just be a premiere of the trailer. Oh, this is definitely going to be like a pre-recorded thing. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it's just going to be a video, but I think it, I literally think it's just going to be the trailer and then that's it and then yeah. it's over. Um, But no, there could be some other stuff. But I mean, like, also, like, what if you wanted to go to the panel? Like, then you're... Yeah. So, like, well, here's the, the thing. thing. Like, the, We're going to be panel... at yeah. Comic-Con, so we, <laughs> we won't be able to... Pro- 
we won't be able to participate in any of this because yeah. we couldn't get into the panel. And I, what am I going to do? Watch this on my phone? I'm going to watch yeah. it on my phone. I'm going to watch it on my phone. <laughs> but I'm not going to watch a whole presentation. If it's just yeah. the trailer, I'll watch the trailer. Maybe uh, bring your iPad so me and Jake can huddle around it. And <laughs> yeah, sure. So we're going to be at Comic-Con where the action is, and we're not going to be able to participate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, uh, so yeah, who who knows? Who Are you going to get a worse time going to the panel or a worse time watching it live at home? Yeah. I don't know. That's what makes me think like they're going to have to present <laughs> something similar, something comparable to like something like the New York Comic-Con panel has to be comparable to what's being shown on the live stream. Right. Or better, because you're in person, so you should get like a little extra thing. Right. I agree. No. Uh, but... Anyway, Nintendo tweeted, tune in at 1.05 p.m. Pacific time on October 6th for a, a Nintendo Direct, the Super Mario Brothers movie presentation, introducing the world premiere trailer for the upcoming film. No game information will be featured. <laughs> they, they always have to specify with their directs what it's about because everybody wants to know what's going on with the metroid prime trilogy <laughs> yes and here's the poster uh so mm -hmm. is the movie uh, the movie is called the super mario brothers movie that's the official yes. name which okay. i'm pretty sure was the name of the other super mario brothers movie from 1993 <laughs> uh, okay uh it's been 30 years since that movie though yeah <laughs> The rest of the article says, as you can see in the announcement tweet, we also got a packed new poster for the movie showing off a little of its animation style. Okay, a little bit of the style, art style. Um, yeah. And perhaps hinting at some of the locations we'll see in the new Illumination movie. In it, we see a Toad Town, including a Toad who wears a similar backpack to Captain Toad. That's him right there. Yep. If not exactly Captain Toad, but he's wearing a backpack like Captain Toad. Um, some of the Mario series' iconic hills in suddenly more epic form. It's very epic looking. Uh, some Mario yeah. Galaxy-esque floating islands. And, of course, Peach's Castle above it all. There are, of course, many little references, too. My favorite being the antiques shop that seems to sell items we haven't seen in a Mario game for some time. No. They're just yeah, you got the yeah. Look, it's got the music block. It's got the no, P block. Yeah, but they're just items that are pixelated. Yeah, it's a joke. Get it? Because it's their antiques. Because pixel pixelized graphics are old. See, it's funny because <sighs> retro is old, like antiques. So they put them in the antique shop because they're old. I, I'm I'm just saying the article said that we haven't seen it in a while. They're just pixelated. <laughs> it's not that deep. Can I zoom in? Yeah, baby. Here we go. Now we can see everything. There's the toad. Right. That's that's definitely not Captain Toad, but maybe. Nope. Maybe he's like uh, Sergeant Toad before he gets promoted to captain. Exactly. Then here's the yeah. antique shop with the music blocks. and the, Is that even what a music block looks like? Yeah, that's from Mario 3, isn't it? It's got like a thing on top, though. Yeah. Yeah, what's I mean, it's little... artistic license. What do you want from it? Okay, you're right. It's a movie. Things are different now. Yes. Uh, people yeah, have to remember course. that. Ooh, there's a little Yoshi egg, too. Yes. And, and a chest see, but... from Mario 3. The barrel says pow on it. In fact, all of these things are from Mario 3, specifically. Yes. yes. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, okay, we got those little guys, little guys from 3D World. I don't remember what those guys are called. Uh... We got. We also have a, a toad is holding a cheap cheap in a bag, like he'd be a goldfish. Yes. Yeah, and if behind it, there's like a cheap cheap store. <laughs> yes, that's where he got it. it. Looks like an aquarium type. Yeah. Thing. Uh, to the right, you see like a fruit stand that looks like a sunshine fruit stand. Yeah. Uh, and then you have this big, epic, grand. Oh, and a pie, a pie shop. But you have this big, epic, grand area. Here's another Mario three thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, big epic grand thing of pipes going all over the place. Uh, mushrooms everywhere because it's the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, it kind of looks like a Mario level, and then yeah, you yeah. got floating items and everything. But of course, the 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 thing that is uh, drawing everyone's attention is Mario's ass. We can see the ass. back of Mario. Uh, just like every time they re-render a, a a character in a game, especially Nintendo. 
they add more detail to like the textures, like the fabric. Yeah. And like they'll put like peach fuzz on people's like skin and stuff. It looks weird. Uh, in this case, a lot of textures. You see all the seams in Mario's overalls, which is a little jarring. His boots look like real boots. His gloves have this little like uh, I don't know, like 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 crease in them. Uh, and he's got no ass. Yeah, it's flat as most hell. Most importantly, uh, I don't know how I feel. Like I like I I'm glad he's got the same sort of shape and whatever. And I don't really mind the 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 increased textures. I love the fact that the toads look like toads. Yeah, I'm horrified what his face is gonna look like. I know that's the thing. Like his hair looks sure. like real hair, which is not normal. Yeah, like uh. Increasing the amount of detail and like texture on his outfit is one thing, and like the toads like look like what you want toads to look like. But if he turns around and he looks weird, like if he looks anything less than the Mario we've seen in video games for the past twenty years, um, there's gonna be problems. There's gonna yeah. be there's gonna be there's gonna be Sonic the Hedgehog levels of that's not Mario. Fix this shit. He literally needs to look exactly like he does in the video game. I know, or or nothing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like he has to look exactly like the video game, it, or it, we don't want to see it at all. It's already you're already asking a lot of us to accept someone other than Charles Martinet uh, providing his voice. So now you have to like nail his look, and, na- and like I mean, nail his look. <laughs> yes, uh, it looks like this Captain Toad type character is like welcoming him into the Mushroom yeah. Kingdom. Uh, is that? It's one of the famous people's playing Toad, is it? Aren't they? That's probably yes. his Toad, the one with. Um, the let me let me just look up the cast just to be sure. Uh, Keegan Michael. Key, I think it's Keegan Michael Key. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably that's probably him. Uh, yeah. while you do that, I'm gonna read the rest of this article. I guess. Um, okay. Originally announced in 2018, Super Mario movie had uh, Super Mario the movie is. Being produced by Nintendo and Illumination, the film would resurface again during the September 2021 Nintendo Direct, where Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto announced the film's cast. Chris Pratt will take on the main role. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy will be Peach, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser, Keegan-Michael Key as Toad, and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. It'll be a while until we see all the the all-star cast uh, because the movie's been delayed until April 2023. Uh, I should also make mention that uh, Nintendo kind of uh, did a little thing uh, like two days ago, and mm-hmm. they uh, uh, posted the website for uh, Nintendo Pictures. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the it's Japanese, Japanese website. Yeah. yeah, so they don't have anything for us. But uh, here it is, Nintendo Pictures. You want a job there? You can go to recruit contact or whatever. <laughs> but there's really nothing on this website. Yeah. It's just literally just like the most corporate looking yeah. bullshit. Uh, but this was from when they purchased an animation studio and they renamed it Nintendo Pictures. And now they're mm-hmm. they're being official. And I'm assuming they wanted this together before this movie uh, uh, trailer dropped so that they could say, like, we're the ones who, who uh, supported it, I guess. Yes, because they're not uh, illuminations doing it. Although but. I'm looking at it, the on the on the Wikipedia at least it just says production companies, illumination, and Nintendo. It doesn't say Nintendo Motion Pictures or whatever. Yeah, I think that uh, Nintendo might try to say like uh, uh, Nintendo's like at, like 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 Motion Picture Arm is the one that's like yeah. helping. So. Nintendo Pictures is new. It's like brand new. So, yeah. so I think that they're going to try to spin it off. Like when Nintendo Pictures was in its infancy, we supported this movie just so that they could have some clout. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we said before, people are going nuts about Mario's ass. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll do the Nintendo Life article first. There's something missing from the Mario movie poster and the internet has noticed and they got a big old picture of Mario's ass. <laughs> His his freaking pants even had the little like button, even had the little like, thing on, on the pocket. 
Nintendo announced Mario. Uh, Nintendo announced in two days they're going to be treated in Nintendo Direct, which will be all things released Mario movie. Uh, we're assuming that that's the title now, right? Super Mario Brothers with the movie. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we'll get a title reveal. Yeah. Uh, on top of this exciting news, we got the first look at the film's final poster showing Mario a whole lot of toads standing in front of Illumination's take on the Mushroom Kingdom. Well, there are a number of details and Easter eggs that have already got us forming in-depth theories. There is one noticeable absence from this poster that has got the internet all riled up. Where is Peach? That's not That's not it. That's <laughs> yeah. a joke. This guy's goofing. And we're not talking about Princess Toadstool. Ah, ah t- what the emoji, suggestion. the emoji of a peach. That's right. We and seemingly a whole host of you too could have sworn that Mario used to be a little more well-rounded in the rear department. Mario's got a little chunk. Yeah, he, uh, he's, you a, can't, he's a well-fed Italian boy. You can't expect us to believe that all that jumping and upteen ground pounds could leave you as flat as a wump. Where, oh, where is Mario's butt? In a journalistic process that has us questioning how it had come to this, we have compared Mario's current build to his 3D er back catalog. And while the results may not be wholly conclusive, there is arguably some reduction going in here. So here's Odyssey, and he's got no butt in Odyssey. What happened? This is a bad I mean, picture, it def- I think. He's a little cold. But you can definitely tell there's more like definition in that area than there is in the in the illumination picture. Here's Sunshine's clearly got a got a butt. Yeah. Uh here's <laughs> Mario 64 and he's just got he's just got polygons. Yeah. It's not much going on down there. But and there's enough. This, this is Odyssey? No, this is Galaxy. Yeah. Uh he's got a little butt got a little bit of a butt but it's still more than this <laughs> yeah god damn and then it's mario <laughs> next to the picture of that frog that has a little butt and it, yeah it, it looks looks the same it looks exactly the same uh uh and this is uh arvalis who says mario's ass is too small for all the running and jumping he does it's true I just yeah. care deeply about anatomically pl- anatomical plausibility in design. This Mario couldn't even jump three feet. Public outrage fixed Sonic. It's not too late <laughs> to fix Mario. Yeah. His ass is there a little bit. There's still it's time. there, but like it clearly doesn't fill out the overalls like Mario does in the game. You know? There's still time for us to get other angles where he has a butt, though. Yes. I mean, for all we know, in the trailer, you're going to see him do a mighty squat, <laughs> and it'll fill up them overalls. Maybe uh, these are just bad overalls. Maybe he goes through a wardrobe change. He gets better overalls. True. Uh, They nerfed hit this man's ass. And this, you know, the pictures these people are using to show that he used to have an ass aren't really that convincing. He doesn't look like he... I mean, he's got something. I mean, but this type of ass could clearly be in this ass. I know, but, like, there's definitely... The pictures from, like, the games are definitely more well-rounded, you know, in, t- in, in compared to the Illumination picture. I really just think he just needs to have a different angle and we'll see his ass. That's that's really all yeah. I think. Yeah, he's a little plump here. He's got a little, He's got a little plump going on. Uh, and then here's a picture of when they nerfed Snake in Smash yeah. Ultimate. That's a thing. That's very sad. Snake has always had a great. That ass. is sad. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it. Really. That's all that we. That's all that's been going on with his Mario yeah. movie. The, the the the. I think the poster looks pretty good for the most part. I'm still terrified to see Mario's face. I'm a little scared yeah. of what it's gonna look like. And also, again, yeah. his hair. He he's got like real hair. Yeah, how, how is scary. that? Like Mario's hair has has texture in the games, but it's like still, it's just it's still basically like a piece of plastic. It doesn't move all that so, much. So in a lot of uh, right, there's a whole friggin' YouTube video about Mario's hair. Um, yeah, but yeah, in some promotional art, it looks like he has like hair, but it's still shaped like it is in the games. You know, like yeah, 
He still has the weird ball sack sideburns. Yeah. Um, and his and the back of his head always has like the this these weird like uh, uh it looks kind of looks like a ball sack, um, like that. It's like it it it's yeah. it's it's shaped in a certain way. <coughs> the back of his head in the movie looks like it's uh he went to a barber and he got a cut. Right. So, uh, I'm uh scared. I'm scared. I'm scared what his face is gonna look like. It better, it better just fucking look like this. It better look like this, and that's it. Yeah. If it looks anything different than uh, this, there's. That's the thing with like video game movies, like when they get adapted into animation, like the work's already done. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> it's, you know, like I know the Ratchet and Clank movie was bad, but like at least they look like Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. No, that was like on spec. Now, now yeah. we've all done those mini games in the Mario games where you have to place Mario's face. Yeah, and I think it's a Mario Party mini game or something, and and like, uh, I think it is an Odyssey mini game also. Uh, you have to place all of the pieces of Mario's face and, and where they go, and so we know yeah. we know exactly what his face is going to look like. If it's any different yeah. than that, we could have done a better job. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So that's it. We'll we'll know more later this week, I guess. Hopefully, we'll see his face, and we'll know what Chris Pratt's voice is like. But I do think it's just going to be a yeah. teaser. I think we're going to barely see anything. In oh this, yeah, in this trailer. I think. I do think they're they're going to have him say, "It's a me, Mario," in the trailer, um, and that can either go really well or really poorly. <laughs> I don't see that going well at all. If he says it's a yeah. me Mario, it, there's going to be a lot of memes. Yeah. There's going to be I a mean, lot of memes no matter what. I I can feel them. I can I can feel them wanting to drop the heavy Italian accent so he'll just go it's me instead of it's a me. <sighs> it's got to be it's and a me. I don't know if, and I don't know if that's better or worse, honestly. Hey, it's me. Mario. He's going to yeah. say Mario. And yeah, that, he and is. That's not going to be okay. Anyway. Uh, this is going to be rough. Uh, yeah. Uh, isn't it going to be weird hearing these characters talk in full sentences? Yes. 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 Absolutely. And like, that's why I understand not getting Charles Martinet to do Mario for like a movie. You want like a professional actor to do not, not that he's not a professional actor. He was in David Fincher's the game, but I mean, you want someone different to like actually carry on a sentence rather than just quick quips, you know? Yeah. But we'll see if they got the right person. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we got Viper Blade with nine months. Happy 100th episode. Can't get enough of this content. You've improved a lot for... You've improved a lot for followers that just listen rather than watch it. So thank you. Will, you were on fire on the Nintendo podcast <laughs> last week. Thank you. Thank you. It was, yes, a, it was we'll, a very fun time. I still we'll have my host, suit. We we'll hosted that. a little game show on the Nintendo podcast last week. Yeah. Uh okay. Why don't we uh talk about Razer and Verizon, what they've got going on. You wanna do that or you wanna do Stadia? Oh Stadia. I want to do Stadia. I yeah. jumped the gun. That's okay. We'll talk about this cloud I... gaming service going <laughs> under so we can talk about the devices that are made specifically for cloud gaming. I mean like we, Stadia. I understand why you wanted to skip it because Google never really gave a shit about Stadia, so why should we? <laughs> also, um, we talk about it pretty extensively in the next Nintendo podcast. Yes. Uh, cloud gaming service Google Stadia will shut down on January 18th, the search giant said in a blog post on Thursday. Google will refund all Stadia hardware purchases through its Google Store, along with the games and add-on content purchased from its Stadia Store. The tech giant aims to have all refunds completed by mid-January. People using Stadia will still be able to access their game libraries, including pro games, if you have an active pro subscription as of Thursday. In an email sent to players, Google warned that publisher support for games may vary and it's possible that your gameplay experience may be affected during the shutdown period, suggesting that some games could vanish or lose features uh, early. 
it appears that Google didn't tell many developers about the shutdown prior to the public blog posting. Uh, Bungie tweeted on Thursday about the co- uh, coming up with a plan of action in the wake of the announcement. Ubisoft intends to allow players who bought uh, its games on Stadia to bring them to PC through its Ubisoft Connect digital distribution service uh, in a tweet on Friday. Uh, Google talked to at least one studio, Luxar Evolved developer Old Skull, about reimbursement for lost revenue as a result of the abrupt change, uh, Axios reported on Friday. Explaining the move, Stadia Vice President and General Manager Phil Harrison noted Google's investment uh, in gaming through its Google Play digital distribution service, its cloud tech, and YouTube streaming. Uh, Over the years, we've also launched a consumer gaming service, Stadia, he said in the blog post. And while Stadia's approach to streaming games for consumers was built on a strong technological foundation, it hasn't gained the traction with users that we expected, so we made the difficult decision to begin winding down our Stadia streaming service. Many employees on the Stadia team will be reassigned to other roles within Google. Uh, The cloud gaming service launched in November of 2019 to mixed reception. Uh, Stadia didn't deliver new games at the moment. It's just trying to deliver a new way to play the games. One can, uh, one that you can already get from other providers. CNET Scott Stein uh, wrote in a blo- wrote at the time. Until Google finds a way to loop in YouTube and develop truly unique competitive large scale games, Stadia isn't worth your time yet. Despite having some solid games in its library, Stadia failed to evolve. Google shuttered its in-house development studio in 2021, hinting that the gaming ambitions were uh, shifting away from Stadia. Uh, Stadia also had plenty of competition from Xbox, PlayStation, NVIDIA, and Amazon. Um, It hasn't been a total bust for the company, with Harrison saying that the tech can be applied to YouTube, Google Play, and its augmented reality projects. The tech will also be made available to Google's industry partners. Sony gave its own streaming service a head start in 2015, buying patents of OnLive, an early game streaming service, shortly before the once promising startup shut down. So uh, I think it's insane that they are refunding basically everything. The only thing they're not refunding is the uh, uh, subscription. Yeah, you're only getting a refund for the hardware. Now, no, I no, got no, no. my... No, no, no. Yeah. And yeah. the software. Oh, and the games, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Imagine buying games for a console and then the console pulls the plug and they just give you your money back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, anybody... That means anybody who bought a game on Stadia is just and played it and beat it is just getting their money back <laughs> for that game. That's crazy. I but it was a shitty if... business model anyway for them. It was. That. It was very bad. It was very confusing. You had to have you had to be subscribed to Stadia and then buy the games individually. But some games were free, some games were included, some games weren't. Um, and it, and it was it, supposed to be free without a subscription. It was supposed yes. to be eventually free, and it never got there. And that that I think was the demise. I don't think it's a well, problem that if if it was free and then you bought the games individually, I think it's a problem that it cost one hundred thirty dollars, and then you had to buy the games individually. Yeah. I think that was another problem too when they because they pitched it as, you know, cloud gaming. That means you could play it anywhere on any device. But at launch, you could only play it in the Chrome browser and you needed a specific Chromecast to play it. Yeah. And you had and like at launch you could only use their controller for it. Yeah. And they never they were very slow in rolling out other apps and devices that you could play the the Stadia on. Yeah. And they never really evolved past that in like the you know the three years it's been four years or whatever that it's been available. And they never made the messaging clear that what the changes to Stadia were. They never had a really good roadmap as to what the next plan for Stadia was. You know, I, I, I think I, they, they thought I think they thought buying uh, the buying like the rights to big third party games like Red Dead Redemption Two and Cyberpunk and what have you would like you know want people to play on stadia more but people just played those games on pc already or whatever console they had well that's the thing is is the whole draw to me was the accessibility yeah and having the licenses to these big triple a games is awesome if you have nowhere else to play them i think yeah. stadia would have been a great place for a lot of people to play games like that but 
they didn't make it accessible because it costs $130 to get a subscription and the controller and a Chromecast. Uh, and you needed all of those things, except really the Chromecast. You could have just used the controller with a Google browser. Yeah. But imagine if you could just go into Chrome, go to Stadia, pay 60 bucks for Cyberpunk, and then just start playing it with nothing yeah. else. That would have been huge. And and they didn't do that, so it, it fucked up everything. And now they have to refund everybody. Uh, this is going away in January, up. I believe. Yes. Yeah, in January. So they're gonna start they're gonna start like handing out refunds and you know, scaling back completely and shutting down. Uh, I wonder I got my stadia kit during that one month where they were just giving it away for free if you had YouTube premium. Uh-huh. So I wonder if I could get my money back for that. <laughs> So I got I've one. Never, I got one I've at never launch. Used it. I've never used it. It's it's been in the box this whole time. I got one at launch, and I also think I got one for the uh, uh, YouTube Premium thing. Yeah, I think I got two. Uh, but yeah, I did. Yeah, I got one at launch. Does that mean I'm getting my money back for the hardware? But I got the Founders Edition, which comes with the subscription. Does that mean I'm getting yeah. all that money back? Maybe. How does that work? I don't know. You you'll have to. Are they going to contact you, or do you have to contact them? I don't understand how any of this works. Yeah. Um. I will say though, a part of the article said that uh, developers who are making Stadia exclusives mm -hmm. didn't know they didn't, didn't get any warning that this was going to happen. Yeah. I was at PAX, and I was at the Thunderful booth, and they were showing me the games. They're the guys who show me Fogs and Curse to Golf, so they always show me good stuff. So I was just looking around at some of the games they had. Um, and one of them looked really cool and they were like, oh, this is a Stadia exclusive. And then I was like, oh, never mind. then I don't want to <laughs> play it. And then somebody came up like a, like a, like a guest at the, at the convention came up and was like, oh, uh, what platforms is this for? And the guy was like, oh, it's for Stadia. And the guy walked away, <laughs> but so this is the game. I found it just now. It's called wave tail and it looks really cool. I need, yeah. I need gameplay. Here it is. I guess it's tr it's another one trying to go for like the the uh, 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 Zelda uh, Wind Waker type situation. Yeah. Uh, and it looks really cool, but it's uh, yeah, it's a Stadia exclusive. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know they were like targeting exclusives. Wait, I, I see mean, it was like Wind Waker, but there was like Sonic the Hedgehog shit going on. <laughs> yeah, that's what they should have done from the start. They should have been promoting their. I mean, they had an in-house game studio, but they shut it down like a year yeah. into Stadia's life. They should have been promoting more uh, exclusive titles. And yeah, it's great that you like, you know, got these big AAA games to be on your service, but they should have spent their vast amounts of money to make it a timed exclusive for Stadia. Look what that did to the Epic Game Store. You know, Borderlands was like an exclusive game on that store for a year. And that did wonders for Epic. You know, they could have done something similar on here. Make Cyberpunk a timed... Ex I mean, Cyberpunk is a bad example. But, like, make that a timed exclusive for Stadia. I think they tried, and they did a really shitty job. Yeah. Uh, this is a Wave Tail on the Thunderful website, and it still says, Platforms, buy at Stadia. Oh, wait, is it there now? I don't know. I guess it's available now. Claim with Pro, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, I could actually just straight up play this game because you claim <laughs> it. You don't actually buy it. Okay. Right. Wait, do I have, am I still paying for a subscription? <laughs> <laughs> I had two because, uh, because I wanted to get the free premium one. Yeah. I think I, yeah, you know, I think I'm still paying for it. <laughs> well, good news. <laughs> you won't have to for very long. Is it still part of premium or no? YouTube Purchases premium? No, and never subscriptions. Was. Stadia Pro. Sign up for Stadia Pro. Okay, I'm not. Okay. Last I paid yeah. for it was February 2022. So we're good. Okay. I mean, not that good. I still paid for way longer. Yeah, you than still pay it. Yo. Know. <laughs> but whatever. Um, also, uh, with all of this comes. Uh, uh, this auction 
You can now buy Google yes. Stadia's infamous and ironic GDC exhibit. Yes. Um, you want to read the article or do you want me to just uh, summarize? Just summarize it. All right. So when they revealed Stadia, they had this 2020, exhibit of like... 2019 Game Developers Conference. Yes. They had this... Um, it's like a little mini museum of like landmark pieces of uh, gaming history. And I forgot what it was like. Innovate, like innovators aren't afraid to try new things or whatever. And they had uh, E.T. for the Atari 2600, the Sega Dreamcast and the Mattel Power Glove for the NES. Three pieces of gaming hardware and one software uh, that all notoriously failed. Yes. Fairly spectacularly. <laughs> It's very strange. Yeah. yeah, these are all commercial failures. ET bombed so hard that they put it they they buried it in a landfill. Yes, it is credited with killing the entire games industry. The Dreamcast failed so hard that it uh it, pull, it made Sega leave the console wars. Yes. Uh uh I don't know. I didn't know that. I mean, I knew that the the Power Glove wasn't like a big deal, but I didn't know it was considered a failure. Oh yeah, cuz it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> just straight up did not work anyway you can buy yeah. there's an ebay listing for these three items uh here they are two thousand dollars <laughs> i think I kinda... the money goes to i think the money goes to support the video game uh foundation i kind of want it <laughs> i, I kind of want it when is it over it's did. over in a day Oh, plenty of time. How much would I be willing to spend to get the the Google Stadia version of a Dreamcast ET and the Power Glove? I don't have I, I don't have ET or Power Glove. No. I do have a Dreamcast. Yes. Uh, our Dreamcast has a United States Marine sticker on it, so this I would think... be a this would be a clean Dreamcast. I peel I peeled it off. Oh, did you? Yeah, I peeled it off okay. and I googoned it. I think it's all good. Okay, cool. Uh, get it signed by the Google Stadia team. <laughs> Where the fuck would you put it all? Right behind me, right there. Yeah. This c- come on. This is kind of it's kind of not a lot of money. Yeah. But I it, mean, it might it might go up. Individually, those are you know three things you can buy, like now for not a lot. <laughs> no, but I. I think it's very interesting that it's the Google Stadia. Oh the yeah, ones absolutely from the Stadia thing. But when I'm saying that there's nothing like if you were to buy that, you know, aside from like a certificate of authenticity or whatever, there's nothing saying that like this was the Google Stadia Dreamcast or this was the Google Stadia Power Glove. True. You just buy a Power Glove and lie. <laughs> And, you know, the listing says Google Stadia Rip original weird GDC display items. So how did they it was get weird. it? Uh, who, who put this together? A series of mishandlings, miscommunications, misunderstanding, and other general mishaps. The grand unveiling of Google's now doomed gaming service was stationed next to three of the most famous commercial failures in video game history. Now these failures can be your failures. <laughs> interesting i work for a charity called video game history foundation in 2019 we were approached to help a marketing firm conceptualize a timeline of video game history leading up to the unveiling of the stadia a sort of here are all of the innovations of the past which are all antiques now that we are in the bright beautiful tomorrow of cloud gaming we were also tasked with providing the items themselves so you are the ones who decided to <laughs> use the failures? Hold on. So how do they end up sitting sitting it next to these bizarre items? Well, that's a long story, but let's just say they changed scope and vision about three times in the process. It went through what felt like several committees and decision makers who all disagreed with each other. They changed direction completely with like a week left before the show. And by the end, it was a mishmash of two entirely different concepts, a timeline of video game console innovation and collectibles people will take a selfie next to. The deep... What? The details don't really matter. What really matters here at the end of the day is that it was not my fault. (laughs) (laughs) 
It sounds like it might have been your fault. It sounds like, you know, he was getting, they were getting frustrated with, you know, working with the marketing department, trying to get like the right systems or whatever gaming paraphernalia to display. Right. And at a certain point, it's just like, you know what? Fuck it. These. <laughs> I'm, I, so the concepts were a timeline of video game console innovation, which doesn't fit the scope. And collectibles people will take a selfie next to, which also doesn't. None of those things are are right. None of those things are ET, a uh, 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 Dreamcast, and a Power Glove. Which yeah, which makes it sound like you know it just got to a point where they stopped caring about like what they were going to show and just right. showed anything. And I mean that I mean that in and of itself was a bad mark because if nobody at Google like had a hand in that and they wanted to present their you know next video game venture as the next thing in video games then they should have had somebody be like yo can we maybe put like an nes or like a genesis or something it it sounds like it's entirely the video game foundation's fault and and uh, with with and it wasn't made easier by by google yeah but i feel like maybe they did this out of spite maybe they were having such a hard time working with google they were like fuck it you're getting this and they knew exactly (laughs) what they were doing when they did it yeah Anyway, all proceeds benefit charity, which works to preserve the history of video of games by building a library of digital archive material, blah, 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 blah. I'll throw in some stickers or something in the box, they say. So that's cool. Yeah. Panasonic Cube is also being sold. Uh not by the same people, but uh it's uh sixteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean that Japanese that's a sixteen hundred dollar machine though. See, like that should have been on display. Yeah, that would make more sense. I want to see what what else this person's selling. Uh, I guess nothing. I guess the video game history museum. That's probably all that they had a hand in with. Stadium. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. So yeah, Stadia will be done in January, I believe. It had a good run. Yes. I thought it was fine no, it <laughs> uh, with terrible marketing. And I think it could have been great and it could have had a lot of cool things and features and it didn't do any of those. Yeah, for, for all intents and purposes, it worked. It did what, you know, Google said it would do, but it wasn't well marketed. Like you said, it didn't have the right games. It didn't have the right exclusives. And it just, you know, once it came out, that was it. You know, Google... You know, it's it's Google's kind of famous for like launching projects and then killing them immediately. There's that yeah. Google Graveyard website. It's almost like they said, All right, we'll release it and it'll just do good. And they waited and when they realized it wasn't doing good, they're like, What's this doing good? And yeah. then they just killed it. You know who's not good at, at killing things when uh it's not doing good? Amazon. Oh. And that's yes. why Luna is still there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Amazon really wants to have like have a foothold in the gaming industry somehow. They like they they uh, want in, even though they are they have been consistently terrible at it. Amazon just, I mean, they're the biggest company in the world, right? So they don't yeah. really give a shit. But they just they just shed money. They just bleed yeah. money all day. They don't give a shit. A reminder that the Lord of the Rings show, The Rings of Power, that season cost one billion dollars <laughs> that is stupid yes <laughs> um some people say that cloud gaming just isn't uh like y- you can't do it these days it's not it's it's not gonna work we, we're we're far away from it yeah those people are not razor and verizon <laughs> <laughs> no sir there's another mobile gaming handheld on the horizon, and it's called the Razer Edge 5G. Made by Razer, Verizon, and Qualcomm, it's the first dedicated gaming device that will support 5G. Uh, it is an Android streaming device that will allow people to stream games from consoles or the cloud, in addition to playing locally downloaded games. It's built on the Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform, Qualcomm's gaming chip that was teased in December of 2021. Uh, Verizon will announce more details at RazorCon uh, on October 15th. Uh, in comparison, to, I know, right? <laughs> uh, 
In comparison to the recently announced Logitech handheld, it looks like players can store games locally on the Edge 5G as opposed to Logitech's G Cloud's heavy emphasis on streaming. Logitech's handheld also uses Qualcomm technology, a Snapdragon S, uh, a Snapdragon 720G SD720G chip uh, released in 2020 and used in smartphones like the Oppo Realme 6 and the Samsung Galaxy A7 II. Uh, its price point, $350 uh, for for a not very exciting chip makes the Logitech G Cloud a hard sell as compared to the Steam Deck or even just the iPhone and a Razer Kashi uh, combination. We'll have more uh, we'll have more information uh, when Razer reveals the Edge 5G. So not. even they went the route of uh, even this article CNET, no GameSpot even GameSpot yeah. went, the, went the route of uh, just get an Android phone with a with a <laughs> with a razor kishi or or yeah or, or whatever a jawbone or backbone whatever, uh, which is fun. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. So there are a lot of devices that are little portable handhelds. Uh, I think what okay. So a lot of devices that are little portable handhelds. A lot of them now have been targeting streaming. Uh. Mm-hmm. One of the big ones was the Ein Odin. That was marketed for streaming, but everybody knew, everybody just knew it was an emulation machine. Yeah. Uh now you have a now you have like actual name brands. Like we saw the Logitech G Cloud last yes. week. Uh Logitech G Cloud was 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 uh has been rumored, and then we saw pictures of it, and then it got announced finally. And then I, I, I pre-ordered it, so it's coming. I think any minute now, it's going to be here. Um, that's three hundred dollars. It's not powerful at all, uh, and, but it's specifically made for streaming games, and it looks like Kojima just got his. <laughs> well, there you go. So it seems like Microsoft is helping with this or backing it in some weird way Mm -hmm. Uh, probably because of game pass which makes a lot of sense so that's kind of crazy that microsoft is supporting this sort of handheld gaming well i think the g cloud will have a microsoft app that will we talked about this last week we talked about it but it's just the game pass app yeah that's what it is right but it's it's being built into the system like it's, it's going to come pre-installed on the system, right? 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 But and like it, among other things, I don't think it's not just going to be a Game Pass. No, it's not just going to be Microsoft. It's I think it's going to have um, Nvidia's thing and whatnot. What I'm saying is, you know, in order for an app to come pre-installed on a device, like that's a lot of like marketing talk and like back and forth that has to happen. Right. It's the same way, like when you buy a TV. And on the remote, it has like the Netflix button or the Disney Plus button. Like that's a lot of money being sent back and forth to get right. that button on that remote. So, you know, I don't know which way it worked. If Microsoft paid Logitech or if Logitech paid Microsoft, but like a lot of money was transferred to get Microsoft pre-installed on the Logitech um, uh, device. So well, this was that's sent to why... Kojima from Phil Spencer. So right. So... So, but that's probably why, like, Phil has all of these because th- that that like partnership between the two, right? That ma- that makes sense. Um, however, so this Logitech device, again, it's made specifically for streaming. Not gonna really be able to play any games on it. It's very underpowered. Yes. Uh, but it's only three hundred dollars. I mean, only three hundred. Three hundred dollars is still a lot. But uh, uh I, that's that's it, it's it's. It it seems reasonable to to not have a lot of power and to just be for streaming and to be an official product from freaking Logitech, backed by Microsoft in some sort of way. The yeah. Razer one though seems to have a pretty decent uh, 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 processor or internals or whatever. Mm-hmm. So this one, I have a suspicion this one might be pretty expensive. I'm a little afraid of this. Yeah. Uh, but this one again is the, the razor one is, is 
targeted specifically for streaming. It's going to have 5G, which is not something we've seen. And that's also going to be expensive because, you know, like yeah. whenever they put a, a cellular in, in a handheld, it, it becomes more money. Um, and also nobody ever buys the cellular versions of these games. That's 5G... not true. I have, I have a 3G PlayStation Vita. Why? <laughs> Because it was on sale. It was cheaper than <laughs> buying the Wi-Fi PlayStation uh, Vita. And it came with three games. <laughs> that is weird. Um, 5G is going to be stupid. Because 5G like only works if you're like within direct line of sight with the towers. Yeah. Or, and like, and yeah. like within five feet of it. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be... It might be pretty powerful. It'll have 5G. This thing's going to be a lot of money. But uh, this one, if it's, is it confirmed if it's Android? I'm just assuming it's Android. I mean, I imagine so. Linux? No. It doesn't say. Uh, I'm going to assume it's Android. And if it is, this thing will be an emulation machine. Yeah. Uh, I think all you really get to see is like the D-pad and people were complaining about the D-pad also, but it looks fine. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, Razer makes good stuff. Logitech also makes good stuff. I like, I like Logitech yeah. stuff. Um, I think both of them have merit in this space. I think Logitech has more, uh, uh, I think they could make it more, consumer friendly i guess they 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 yeah. can make it more for like casuals razor is more for like this could seem like a novelty product coming from razor but but from or like yeah. a novelty like like pro gamer thing yeah but, but coming from logitech it feels more like a mainstream thing but at the same time you know like i keep harping on logitech and razor both have partnership with big box retailers like best buy right so they can put their product in actual physical stores and when, you know, mom and dad go to actual physical stores to like shop for something like this and they can talk to like the Best Buy representative or the Target representative and say, which one should I get? They might be able to persuade them more towards the razor because it's more powerful because it'll probably have a longer lifespan. So so there is actual real world competition between <laughs> but between uh, both of these Logitech yeah. and Razer are basically competing right against each other. Uh, Flo in the chat said, uh, do you have a delivery date on yours? Mine is October 20th. I didn't even think to look. I, I knew it was sometime relatively soon. I don't even know what email I used. I'm all <laughs> over the place. Uh, I'm going to assume mine's around then. I mean, I did it I did it pretty, pretty early. Right. Uh, I would assume at the end of the month, I'll probably have a video on it. Uh, I will also say that... Uh, Hall Sion Hippo says, uh, well, you're all reading before said it was Android. And you know what? He's right. I tried to alt uh, uh, control F Android and it didn't come up, but it's right here. Razer Edge 5G is an Android streaming device that will allow people to stream games from consoles or the cloud. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. In addition to playing locally downloaded games. And that <laughs> is not something that the Logitech uh, is focusing on. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you'll be able to download games, but it, it, they're not going to want you to play anything uh, uh, powerful on it. You're not probably not going to be playing any GameCube games on the G Cloud, is what I'm trying to say. But on the Razer, probably. Uh, anyway, I just want to point out we live in fascinating times because you remember, like, ten years ago when the 3DS and the Vita came out and they weren't selling very well initially. And everybody was saying it's because, you know, everybody's playing games on the cell phone. Handheld gaming is dead. Just play the games on your iPhone or your Android phone. That's the future of handheld gaming. There will never be a need for another dedicated <laughs> handheld gaming device again. And you are currently swimming in them right now. <laughs> I should say for a really long time, like what, like, eight years maybe yeah there was a well, dr big drought in there was a gaming. big drought yeah i mean the the 3ds and the vita both came out in 2011 mm -hmm. so for the longest time those are the only two gaming hand performing at the same level as their predecessors were because of you know all these iphones and android phones and whatnot but now like 
you know, all, all you see now are handheld gaming devices. Yeah. You know, the Switch, the Steam Deck, the Ambernick, the Ion Neo, the Ion Odin, uh, these two things, uh, the Retroid, the Analog Pocket, all, you know, the the fucking, the R2-D2 or whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's a lot of great, I just posted a YouTube short about all of them. Yes, exactly. That's my point. Dead. Um, Yes, I, I I think that the Switch did so well that all these other companies, especially all the little Chinese ones that could like fire things out like quickly. Yeah, they saw that and they were like, there is still a market for this stuff. And yes. I think that uh, and, and, and then all these other companies are popping up saying, oh, OK, well, if Microsoft and, and Sony aren't going to make anything, then we'll just do it. And that's why Logitech is just throwing their hat in the ring. And, and Microsoft yeah. is like, all right, do it, dude. Well, we'd love to put our servers wherever we can put it. Um, I think. We're still in need of a of an underpowered device like a Miu Mini, mm -hmm. but made by somebody, uh, you know, with some clout, uh, yeah. namely Nintendo. Make a yeah. fucking little <laughs> Game Boy again. Anyway, uh, Caleb Fox with three months says, I'm getting sick of using my Pro Controller for 2D platformers, and I'm thinking about getting a wired adapter so that I can use an SNES, SNES controller. Do you know of any good adapters, or should I save up for the 8-Bit Do one? Uh, 8-Bit uh, Do is good. Yeah. You can get the wired 8-Bit Do controller. Well, no, I, he he wants... Uh, oh, should I save up for the 8-Bit Do controller? Oh, yeah. Get the wired... Yeah, get the yeah, wired 8-Bit Do controller. It's if you're cheap. looking to save some money, like the wired 8-Bit Do controller is like only 25 bucks. He originally said he wanted an adapter. I don't really think in a, in adapting Super Nintendo to Switch is worth it because uh, yeah. you're using. I like Super Nintendo controllers, but they're unless you have a brand new one, they're gonna be shittier than just getting an 8-bit Do controller because the 8-bit Do controllers are they feel exactly like brand new Super Nintendo controllers. Yeah. So you're probably better off just getting that. Um. Yeah, that's my that's my advice. If you want to save some money, just get the get the wired one. Mm -hmm. Uh. Are there any Switch controls with the U Wii U Pro layout? Somebody said, that, "Did you ask me this already?" Should I just look for an adapter? There is no controller anywhere that is the same layout as the Wii U Pro controller. Because yeah, that on one the was unique because the both analog sticks were on top yeah. instead of offset, or the PlayStation style where they're on the bottom. That was actually really comfortable, though. If like you actually like played with it, you can get one of those wacky controllers, like the uh, I think Astro made a controller that was modular, so you can put the thumbsticks on the top if you really wanted to. Yeah. Um, but that sounds expensive. I think it uh, retailed for like two hundred dollars. Halcyon also, Halcyon Hippo says, Ape Do makes a $25 circuit board that drops into an original SNES controller housing, and it provides battery and Bluetooth. Oh. That's also a way to go, if you don't mind a little DIY. I Try that. that. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, okay, let's talk about Skull and Bones. <laughs> it has been delayed for the fifth time. In a press release wow. today, Ubisoft has given a new release date of March 9th, 2023, allowing Skull and Bones to sneak in just ahead of the end of the fiscal year. The publisher explained that in, its, in the release that while the game development is finished at this stage, the extra four months will be to further polish and balance the experience following technical tests and insider program feedback prior to, uh, from prior closed betas. Skull and Bones development has been tumultuous. It was first revealed back in E3 2017, appearing at the time appearing at the time to be a riff on the naval combat in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Uh, at the time, it was set to come out in the fall of 2018 and focus on prior gen consoles. The first delay was announced the following year, pushing Skull and Bones back to 2019-2020, when it didn't surface for some time after reports suggested that it had been quietly rebooted. It was delayed a second time to 2020 and then again to 2021. In the meantime, further reports allege a toxic work culture at Ubisoft uh, Singapore amidst wider accusations of hostile work environment company-wide. Skull and Bones was later delayed into 2022-2023 and then given a November 8th release date, which is what we'd, we've expect up to now. We've also learned earlier this month that it will be Ubisoft's first published game to retail at $70. 
Assuming it doesn't get a sixth delay, it is coming to Series X and S, PS5, Stadia, Ha, Luna, and PC with Ubisoft Plus uh, <laughs> users on PC, Stadia, and Luna getting uh, the game one day early as part of the service. A little bit of an old article, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Skull and Bones, Ubisoft's pirate game. I don't understand what's taken so long. They made this game already. Yes. Yes, it is literally just the boat stuff from Assassin's Creed 4, aka yes. the stuff we didn't like. Yep. <laughs> uh they made a whole game about it. Um I think I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that it was it was being created in, in a very uh toxic and just her- oppressive working environment. Yeah. Like, uh, if you read the articles, think... about, you read the articles about you read the articles about what's going on in Ubisoft Singapore, it's just atrocious. I don't think there's anything wrong with delaying games, but the reasons it's this has been delayed five times is because of uh, the horrible working environment at Ubisoft. Yeah. I fucking hate Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. they're they're a bad company. Worse than Activision, who's to say? But on that level, I would I would suggest. I, I mean I it's not even a to to okay. Look, you have to look at the bad shit the company has done to their employees. That's important. Yes, but yes. even removing yourself from that, their fucking games haven't been good. Yeah, that in, too. <laughs> in in a really long time. <laughs> so, I I'm complete. I I don't know any other company that I that I'm so like jaded on. Like I, I'm just yeah. I don't want anything to do with 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 a game that says Ubisoft on it. I yeah. I immediately I mean, just tune out. I'm not excited when I see that little. I mean, like even EA, like I'll like they. I'll give it a chance. Dead, yeah, the Dead Space trailer looks good from today. I'll check it out because at least you, EA, like, uh, I mean, EA kind of did a lot on what the snowdrop engine, like they tried to force yeah. that on everybody. Uh, frostbite, frostbite was, I yeah. think snowdrop was Ubisoft. Yes. Yeah, snowdrop is Ubisoft. Uh, frostbite. Yeah. They've tried to force that on a lot of people, but at least the games felt different from game yeah. to game. Ubisoft, yeah. every single game felt like Assassin's Creed and, and yeah, so even far like- cry. When you're re- when like they announced the reboot of Splinter Cell, they specifically had to come out and say this was going to be a single player only, non open world game without like tower climbing and fetch yeah. quests and all that collectible garbage. Will it be a Splinter Cell game? Yeah, that's the question. I think it's I think it's possible we're gonna play it. We're gonna get our hands on it. And it's gonna feel like Assassin's Creed. You're gonna climb the building like you do in Assassin's Creed, and I'm yeah. gonna get pissy. Oh, I mean it's. Like they already pushed their luck when they recasted Sam Fisher for Blacklist. Yeah, they were already pushing their luck with that. Yeah, I, I didn't love. Michael I didn't love Blacklist. I understand Michael Ironside was sick and he couldn't reprise the role for that game. I get it, and I understand like eventually you got to get a new person to play Sam Fisher, but like that felt wrong. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in love with that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, is this a rumor? Joker's coming to multiverses? Spoilers for multiverse announcements. Uh, it, it was a data data miners found. I'll just summarize it. Uh, data miners found uh, voice clips uh, from Mark Hamill oh. as the Joker in the game. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Joker uh, from Joker Persona. was previously... Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Joker was previously rumored to be a fighter in the game thanks to a March data mine. New audio containing Joker's lines was posted on Twitter by user uh, Lee Sao. In the video, you can hear all of Joker's match announcement lines in the voice that sounds quite a bit like Mark Hamill's. So yes, uh, Joker is coming to Smash Brothers clone multiverses. Match <laughs> announcement real- lines. What does that mean? So probably like his taunts or like his intro, like he like he shows up, he's like it's the Joker or whatever. Okay, I thought it was like uh, and an, the announcer because that would be funny oh, too if, if, that the, would if awesome the Joker too, yeah. was the announcer. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. 
yeah. multiverse. I'm I'm pretty surprised. I mean, it still just looks like a shittier Smash Brothers. But right. I am pleasantly surprised by the amount of effort that went into it and about the amount of support and updates it has had. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I shouldn't I, I, be this he, surprised. I think I'm only surprised because Nicktoons was so bad. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, like, it, it was very clearly, like, that, and that, that's a good, like, Nicktoons and Multiverses are a good example of, like, two companies wanting to do the same thing, but one clearly gives a shit yes. and the other clearly doesn't. <laughs> I think even something as simple as like when they announced multiverses and the announcement trailer clearly had voice acting in it. Yeah. Whereas we didn't get that Nicktoons to like a month after the game launched. Yeah. So yeah, that was, I was, I still haven't played multiverses at all, but it's free to play. Yeah. Apparently. Me neither. Yeah. I, there's no reason why we shouldn't. Yeah. No, I should just freaking download it. Yeah. You know, what else is free to play overwatch Two. We don't have any articles about that. Uh, overwatch no, two uh, came out today. Yeah, uh, I think all the articles are basically saying it's Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Overwatch 1 is dead. It, it, you cannot play it. Yes, yeah. It, it has been replaced with Overwatch 2, which is very strange. Yeah. Uh, I will give it a try. Maybe later tonight I'll try it out. But I, I don't think you can even get in the game. No, I, I don't. Yeah, XQC, no, if there's like, a... just got in the game. There's a... Blizzard is blaming a DDoS attack on the servers. Yeah, so I have a I have a bit of a conspiracy theory on that. I think most <laughs> of the time when people say that there's a DDoS attack, it's just it overwhelmed servers and they weren't ready for it. So they got to blame it on something, so they blame it on being attacked. I literally just think yeah. they are busy. Well, I can't that's very possible. Be the case. Well, yeah, I guess, but at the same like they should have known if you're shutting down Overwatch 1 and you didn't and like you want everybody to migrate over plus any new players, mm -hmm. especially if the game's gonna be free, you should have had like the the right amount of servers for this game. Yeah, just like New York Comic Con should have had the right amount of servers up for when they announced uh, that they were gonna do uh, uh, registrations yeah. for the panels. Yeah. Every remember it was in like the when the PS4 came out, every game that had multiplayer that launched would crash immediately. Battlefield yes. 4 yes. was unplayable for the first two weeks that it was around because they mm -hmm. just weren't expecting it to be as busy as it was. And what is a DDoS attack if not just a <laughs> bunch of fake people trying to play the game? Mm -hmm. That's what a DDoS attack is. It's just uh, denial of service. It's just people trying to, to fuck with it. And yeah. I, what if they're just real people trying to play the game? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's that's my little uh hot take on DDoS attacks. Uh Yeah, XQC I th I can't tell if he's playing the game. Like he he's uh he's like in Overwatch 2, but I don't think he can get games. He just keeps watching TikToks instead. <laughs> yeah, has, like, I think nobody nobody can play right now. He has 100,000 people watching him watch TikToks while he waits to play Overwatch. What are we doing wrong? <laughs> What are we doing wrong? Also, there's a lot of people who, uh, because of the Activision uh, uh, controversies, there's yes. a lot of people who uh, claimed they would boycott Overwatch 2 who are playing Overwatch 2. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> just think, let's not forget. Not forget. Yes. Uh, um, some of you in the chat might be too young to remember... Uh, when people wanted to boycott the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 because they weren't going to support dedicated servers. And on the day that game launched in the Steam group boycotting Modern Warfare 2, everyone was playing Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Maybe it was just so that the servers would be would be less busy. Uh I can tell Wolf then never played higher ranked matches in Apex and got DDoSed all day. No, I've never played higher rank matches in no. Apex. Um, anyway, 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 uh, let's talk about PlayStation Stars. <laughs> for yes. Some <laughs> well, uh, well, one there's like one little controversy thing that I can summarize real quick, but 
uh, the controversy. Sony's new reward program, PlayStation Stars, launched overnight in Asian regions and Japan, and users are expressing their concern surrounding a perk tied to the highest rank in the scheme. If you reach level four, which requires you to buy four full price games and unlock 128 rare trophies, you will be given uh, priority should you need to contact PlayStation support. The benefit essentially hands uh, hands you a queue skip over those of a lower tier or who haven't signed up for the service at all. However, Japanese players argue quality customer support shouldn't be gated behind a rewards program. It should instead be available to all. Sony's customer support isn't particularly great even at the best of times, so the perk hasn't gone down well with uh, PS5, PS4 owners who are unlikely to reach level 4 in the program. Uh, one Twitter one Twitter response argues customer service priority should be handed to newcomers since they may not know how a feature works or are aware or are unaware of how to solve uh, something simple. Another simply says customer support must be equal. While it's accepted, PS5, PS4 owners uh, who attain the highest level in PlayStation Star scheme should be handed noteworthy benefits. Some may see. Some seem to feel that customer service should not should be equal for all, no matter how long you've owned a Sony system or how many games you've bought. So basically, uh, right now the highest tier is level four. If you're if you're a level four PlayStation Stars member, um, congratulations, you get you get moved to the front of the line if you call customer support. How Everyone you, else, stay on hold. How do you become level four? Uh, according to this. Level four requires you to buy four full priced games and unlock 128 rare trophies. 128? Yeah. All right, that's kind of a lot for rare trophies. Yeah. It's kind of a lot. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm not about it because I'm not in the level four. I don't like it. <laughs> if yeah. I was in level four, I'd be like, fine, whatever. Yeah, I think it's such a weird thing to make a perk you know yeah like like we'll only help you if you're customer a... service yeah. imagine if like other companies work this way you know imagine if like you needed to call like apple support for something and they look is like oh well you only subscribe to apple tv you know if you subscribe to apple tv icloud apple music and apple news and apple fitness yeah. then we would have jumped to the front of the wall i mean the well i was gonna say the difference here is that uh uh it's it it no yeah you have you it seems like they're rewarding you for playing games and doing good in the games and achieving yeah. things in the games which is what PlayStation Stars should be all about however it's also you have to buy the games <laughs> <laughs> so uh it is sort of like uh it is sort of like that it is like how good of yeah. a customer are you um, exactly yeah and you know customer support it's not about that <laughs> yeah uh it's it's it should be prioritized based on how important the uh yeah the, the 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 problem is that you need help with yeah like oh uh if i don't know how to reboot my system help me oh my system is about to catch on fire what do i do <laughs> well um you don't have place you're not a playstation stars you're only at level three of playstation stars <laughs> i'm gonna help yeah, the or guy like help i need to system. lock my account somebody's in some russian guys yeah. in there taking all my money buying all the Fortnite points yeah um so, so already yeah. playstation stars off to a fantastic start yeah and uh real quick apparently uh data miners have found that there's uh, a secret fifth level uh, oh. that is invite only. <laughs> How do I get there? That's a good question. <laughs> I want to be a fifth uh, level member. The fifth tier, which is supposedly called Diamond, is referenced in image PlayStation website, along with a description that reads, in an endless sea of stars, it seems like there's, there's nowhere to hide, uh, but you wouldn't be here if you let challenges like that stop you. Welcome to level five. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. It's we have it's, to imagine uh, it will include having unlocked the platinum trophy in both NAC and NAC two. <laughs> I mean that I would give you a diamond <laughs> diamond tier status <laughs> for that. Interesting. Uh maybe yeah. I wonder if it's something secret that people have that they just didn't want to talk about. Curious. Maybe. I mean, like I said, it's not it's like this wasn't like Sony didn't announce this. There was this was like data miners found it on their website. Right. So this hasn't been revealed yet. 
uh, what has been revealed is that Sony's developing Horizon Zero Dawn remaster on PS5. An unnamed source uh, with within Sony cites uh, cited by MP First and mind, Video Game Chronicles officially announced. <laughs> <laughs> pointed to a remastered version of the open world PS4 title. Details on the remaster are scarce at the moment, but reportedly include new character models, lighting, and animation. It also like it's also likely that it will incorporate new accessibility features, quality of life improvements, and compatibility with the DualSense controller, mirroring some of the improvements we saw with the remastered version of The Last of Us, which came out in early September. Uh, here are some graphical comparisons between Zero Dawn and Forbidden West so you can get the sense of what to expect from the potential remaster. Sony and Guerrilla Games are also reportedly working on a multiplayer title set in the Horizon universe. In 2018, Guerrilla Games rehired game director Simon LaRoche uh, to work on an unnamed project. Uh, some of LaRoche's credits include working on Rainbow Six Siege and the online modes for Splinter Cell Blacklist and Killzone 2. A now deleted tweet from voice actor Lance Reddick also suggests that Horizon Forbidden West DLC was coming very soon. If the rumors are true, then the Horizon Zero Dawn remaster will join a number of other Sony exclusives done uh, redone on the PS5, including Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, and Uncharted 4. However, much like the Last of Us remaster, it's expected that the Horizon Zero Dawn remaster will be priced at $70. So... This will cause more outrage because it will be $70. Uh, yes. Also, I like I know that Horizon Forbidden West was very pretty and had a lot of like lighting effects and had uh, some graphical upgrades. Uh, I think just like The Last of Us Remastered, they look largely the same. Looks yeah. like the same fucking game. Um, I'm curious to see how much they made off of the uh, Last of Us. Uh, 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 I, I don't yeah. like calling it a remaster because the last one was called Remastered. Yeah. <laughs> it's. It I really guess it's a remake, a... but it's like still not even... It doesn't feel like a I remake. Know, it's the same game. It's the same <laughs> like game. Really re- they really didn't do much to it. I mean, I don't want to say that because I'm sure they did. <laughs> they put the office from the office in there, apparently. But but they, they but, couldn't have spent that much time on it. As much as you, you normally know. would for a full remake. Yeah. It seems like a lot of it was poured it over. I know. And, and like, I don't understand, because, like, you can play Horizon Zero Dawn, the PS4 version, you can play that on PS5. I don't understand why they don't just patch it. And like give you the PS5 version if you already own the game. Well, because it's a new what... engine, but but again, it still just feels like they ported it over and fixed some stuff up. Yeah. I'm confused. And and that's that's it's gonna happen here. Yeah. I, I I'm uh I, I'm in, again I'm interested to see some sales numbers for the Last of Us remake, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Um because that we're just gonna get a lot more of those. No, no matter how much uh, you people don't like it, and how everybody complains yeah. that uh, the same game is being sold for more money now, uh, if people buy them, they're gonna keep making them. Yeah. So don't buy it. If you're complaining about the price, don't buy it. <laughs> so both Horizon games were made on the same engine, the Decima engine. I mean, it's definitely been. Uh, yeah, no, it's been updated. To shit, yeah, yeah, but if it's the same engine, then it, it stands to reason that you know you can add the enhancements to the more advanced right. system. You know, yeah, they could just literally just open the game in the new engine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's a lot more complicated than that, but still, it's probably uh, it's probably a port situation. Yeah. Uh, the Konami man said, "Could they at least remaster slash remake PS3 games instead?" That would make more sense. Honestly. Still waiting on my Metal Gear remake. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's weird. That's a weird story. Yeah. Uh, uh Microsoft this... creates Pro Activision. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. This I'm sorry. now this is a weird story. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, so basically, to summarize. As we all know, Microsoft is trying to buy Activision Blizzard. Uh, it's there's currently a lot of hold up in various world governments because this is a very big deal. Microsoft went ahead 
and made a whole web page on their website about why it's a good thing that they're going to buy Activision. <laughs> Interesting. Here's a There's Bloomberg a little... video also uh, about yes with about... Uh, with CEO with Microsoft Chairman and CEO Satya Nadella, the head of all of Microsoft, not just oh my God. Xbox, the head of all of Microsoft, talking about why this is a good thing. There's a chart on the website. The benefits benefits for players. More games on more devices, including Xbox, PlayStation, phones, and online. Choice in how and where people buy games with subscription and one-off purchase options. For the 95% of gamers who play on their phones, alternatives to gaming offerings from a, the dominant mobile platforms. Uh, I don't know. Man. Like, yeah, this is very strange. This uh, is very I strange. Mean, I understand. I understand the benefits of of. I mean, it's still it's hard to call it benefits because I'm like supporting a multi billion dollar deal between two multi billion dollar companies. You know, like yeah, like like I know that as a consumer, it would be better if, if Activision worked with Microsoft because I like I, I like Microsoft more than I like Activision, and I like some of the yeah. stuff Activision does, but I think they could do it better, and I think Microsoft would help them do it better. Uh, yeah. but as like, you know, uh, 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 a citizen of, of this country, I'm a little <laughs> weary about two superpowers colliding it with each other. You know? Yeah. It's just, it's so weird. Cause usually like, usually in something like this, if a, if one big company is going to like buy or merge with another big company, they just do it. Like they don't try to like hide the fact that they're doing this for uh, other than like a money-making scheme. Like when uh, ATT bought Time Warner not too long ago, there, there wasn't all this like, oh, it's a benefit for the consumer or whatnot. Well, no, I think they did. I think they did try to pull that off. because it, it, The only reason they do this is because they think that the deal is going to get squashed by like the right. government. So, so yeah. So they do this to show, like, uh, to to get people on their side, to get to to get people to vote the right way, so that but the the deal can. I, go I guess I guess what I'm saying is I've never seen it so like out there and like so yeah. try hardy as I have with this. Like they're really trying shameless. to push the fact that like it's if, absolutely yeah, shameless. If, <laughs> if Microsoft bought Xbox, it would be good for everyone, not just Xbox players, which. Right how show us like it, it it's really hard to say because i kind of agree with with what they're saying here it's just uh at the same time you are still doing this to make a fuck ton of money you know yes. like i shouldn't have to like you shouldn't need my support for this and also like you know your past actions with acquisitions yes you have minecraft still on home console on like every console uh, you've honored your contracts um, with like Bethesda releasing games on PlayStation and whatnot before you acquire them. Um, this is different. Like this is a much bigger company and a much bigger deal. And also you've also shown that you're, you're willing to let, make games exclusive to your platforms. So you have to show otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a very strange case of a uh, company trying to seem human so and trying to garner sympathy for spending 70 billion dollars yes that would be better used for literally anything else in in yes. in, in, in you know society yeah <laughs> um but here we are i mean hey uh you know i think call of duty is gonna very much benefit from them spending 70 billion dollars so i'm not yeah. too mad about it but this does seem very strange <laughs> uh, last thing CD Projekt Red's making more games even though they never finished Cyberpunk <laughs> yeah so real quick I'll summarize it we are getting uh, three different Witcher projects a game uh, codenamed Sirius uh, a whole new Witcher trilogy made by CD Projekt Red proper and a third game uh, codenamed Canis Ma uh, Majoris um, made by an outside studio What's with that? cyberpunk with cyberpunk uh phantom liberty it's uh an expansion pack to the game uh and project orion 
which is a direct sequel to Cyberpunk 2077. So they finally got the game in a state where people are happy with it, and now they've announced a sequel, which means they've probably been working on that for a very long time. Yes. And then also a new IP called Hater. A new IP codenamed uh, Hatter. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and DLC games that they're working yes. on. Yes. <laughs> seven. But I guess seven. current, I guess that would, can I subtract two from seven? Five. There's really five games because uh, yeah. the Witcher trilogy doesn't really, I mean. The, yeah, they're going to start with they are Star Witcher with four. Yeah. 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 Uh so what the hell could Sirius and Canis Majoris be? Maybe a new Gwent game? Uh and some other random bullshit. I can't imagine it being like an actual Witcher game. Sirius set in the Witcher universe and is created with the support of CG Project developers. It will differ from our past projects in the sense that it uh is targeted at a broader audience. Along with a single player experience, gamers will be able to play with others as Sirius contains multiplayer. Okay. Whoa. All right. That might be a little more, uh, a little bit of a bigger game than I was expecting. And then Canis Majoris will be another full fledged Witcher production. It will be created by an external studio um, headed by experienced developers who have worked on earlier Witcher games. Tech wise, we plan to use Unreal Engine 5 and the tool set we created for Polaris. So, nothing really known about Canis Majoris other than it's another Witcher. But Unreal Engine, that's weird, isn't it? Don't they usually uh, have their own engine? Well, yeah. Well, they announced that because they announced they're making like a Witcher game before this, but they announced it was going to be Unreal Engine 5. I think uh, because they realized that their engine that they used on Cyberpunk doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, it's weird that they're spreading themselves this thin. Like, like I mean, they're a big company, and I'm sure that they are prioritizing certain games over others. Like, I'm sure they're not working on all of these that heavily, yeah. like, right out the gate. But uh, Cyberpunk should have, like, I don't know. Like, I they, ha they must have learned a lot from Cyberpunk. I think they did. I think they did, because, like... What does this mean, having seven games <laughs> in the pipeline? <laughs> Well, some of these games are being developed by outside studios. Yeah. So Which is good. I think that's, that is good. This one thing, you know, get the get help. <laughs> I think also too using Unreal. Uh, I'm sure it makes a big deal because that's a well known, uh, more more stable engine compared to what they were using. Right. Um, I mean, it's it, you read articles about like development of like games nowadays. And the, the developers will say, we don't want this game to be cyberpunk. Like cyberpunk has kind of become like, like a shorthand for a game that's unfinished that is going to be released unfinished, <laughs> you know, and no studio wants that. So they're doing everything they can to like, not have that happen again at CD project red, the company that made cyberpunk definitely can't afford to have that happen again. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm confident that they're gonna. The next game is not gonna be another cyberpunk. Yeah, but it is really strange that they have so much that they're putting this much on their plate, even though they already they couldn't just do one game. <laughs> yeah, I think this is just their way of like, you know, easing fans to say like we're working on. We have things that you will like coming in the pipeline. Yeah, you know, we know you like The Witcher. We will keep making Witcher games. Uh, people are starting to like cyberpunk now so we will support that series uh and we got something new in the pipeline uh metascension says cyberpunk was and is a good game uh i don't agree uh what there was a there's an article recently like there was like 20 million con uh 20 million copies sold of that game and there was like however many million like concurrent players recently 20 the million is a lot yeah like this That's game is lot. having a this game is having like a big resurgence. I think the Netflix show helps and I think like time has healed a lot of wounds. Uh, Especially I, because people got like the next gen systems which can actually play them. Even though it had a horrible launch and 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 didn't work, mm -hmm. it might have still been a success to them. <laughs> oh, sure it sold like really well at launch, you know. Uh I want to read this though. Uh after 
in the hater section, it says, I'm excited to announce the CD Projekt Red has begun creative exploration on a third entirely distinct IP codename hater. Uh, we had started thinking about it a few years ago. Early stage conceptual works uh, commenced in 2021. And for the first time in our history, the IP is being incubated entirely within CD Projekt Red. It is important to understand that we are not making a game just yet. We are working on the foundation of this new setting. Okay, so this is going to be a long okay. time. But then this says yeah. multiplayer. So I know you talked about multiplayer for a Witcher game, but yes, uh, I want to see if this has anything to do with Hater. That would be all about the new games, but we have more to share with you today. We, while we believe that our games and worlds create with, created within them, are telling great stories that impact many. We also believe that letting gamers interact with each other will create new experiences for them. By doing so, we do not want to make the single player experience smaller in any way because of that direction was important. Unreal Engine 5, our new engine, uh, offers uh, a solid tech framework allowing us to develop multiplayer for most of our future titles. Most of the future titles. Our approach to developing online competences they, they use such big words. And a broad <laughs> overview of the technical challenge, uh, changes occurring at the group are presented by board members re reasonable, responsible for these <laughs> respective fields. So not just The Witcher, but a couple more games are going to have multiplayer, which is yes. a very new thing for uh, yeah. CD Projekt Red. Uh, All right. So that's strange. Hopefully but... they, hopefully they work. I mean, they've they literally only fucked up Cyberpunk. <laughs> they, they had like yeah. a great track record before that. So I'm not too. Uh, I I have a little bit of faith in them. Uh, anyway, that's everything. We did all the news. Yay! Hey, we did it. It's time for this though. <laughs> Uh, I have a runner up here too, but the first one here we have, uh, this is, um, new moves under his belt and it's the end. It's, it's Mario fighting Bowser from the original Super <laughs> Mario. And then it's an animation of him just absolutely beating the fuck out of Mario <laughs> doing like a, like a, a smash brothers style, like a yeah. like side, uh, like, like side aerial and, and, and that's good. Him off that's a good one. It's a good animation, but the runner-up, though, uh, I thought would be good for you. Uh, this is uh, by Strange Harbors, and it's uh, it's 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 just, they don't know it's open season on all suckheads. It's Blade standing in a party, and there it's raining it's, blood on all of them. It's that it's that image meme of uh, the guy uh, in the back corner of a party, like they don't know I'm whatever. Yes. That's good. I like this played. one. Yeah. And that's that. <laughs> I appreciate a good Wesley Snipes as Blade meme. Especially right. because I don't know what's going on with the new movie. <laughs> is is he not going to be in it? He's. I mean, we knew like he was not going to be Blade anymore. Uh, Marshala Ali is playing they should, Blade. They should just make but, Blade again. <laughs> but like now, there was a report like the director left. Uh, the script is apparently only 90 pages long. It has two apparently lackluster act uh, action sequences. And Ali uh, is reportedly just very frustrated with the whole process. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, hey, Black so, Panther trailer. It looks very good, though. That does look good. I'm I'm interested to see how that goes. Do we know the timeline there? Is this uh, it's not like uh, it's 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 not during the snap, right? I don't think so. Because that would make sense if it was during the snap. It would, but no, I think it's I think it's post snap. So we need to find out what happened to the Black Panther in that. Yes, in I mean they they make universe. it very clear that T'Challa is dead. <laughs> yeah, you know, so how they handle that, how they, like what they do with it, we'll see. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last week's Wolf Den podcast, we have some comments. Yes. Uh, like from that dude who says, if you turn the heat on in September or October, then move to Florida. No, I want to live here with the heat <laughs> yeah. on. Shut up. Yeah. 
Luke Antone says, what happened? The desk mat. I want to buy one for my dorm. Uh, they sold out, but hopefully there'll be new ones. Uh, Raymond Paradis says, Bob, don't watch the Japanese dub of Cyberpunk. I mean, on what? I mean, do what you want. I'm not your dad. <laughs> but the English dub <laughs> is great. And from my experience, you get a much better idea of who the characters are and their personalities. Yeah, I saw a TikTok. You're reminding me now. I saw a TikTok that I was talking about how um, uh, there's like accents and stuff to, yeah. to the characters. And you just lose all of that if you listen to the Japanese dub. So that that makes it makes sense. Uh, Etre, I was finally able to snag myself a PS5 through Amazon, and I want to buy a Metal Gear game. Oh, no. I have played <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 and enjoyed it, but I want to try one of the older games. Do you guys have any recommendations? Which should I try first? Um, well, I think the problem is there really are no Metal Gear games available for the PS5 other than Metal Gear Solid 5 right now. <laughs> uh, you can't play them back and pat i don't i don't think no i don't think so i don't think they released um the hd collection on ps4 i don't know if they're on playstation premium interesting so yeah all right well my suggestion was gonna be all right my favorite might be my next favorite might be metal gear solid 3 Mm -hmm. but uh if you are that interested in metal gear just play metal gear solid the original and then work your way up if you're that interested because yes. metal gear solid yeah. the original is a good place to start i think this is very yes it's very good also uh, p what about peace walker that that's got to be available uh well no maybe? i guess it would only be available in the collection yeah I also know uh, they took down those games from like digital stores a while back because of uh, music licensing problems. They're supposed to come back online, but I don't they, know if I they think have they did. yet. They they did. Yeah. I think they came up pretty quickly. No, uh, Metachronics in the chat still hasn't gotten three and two back up for sale yet. Oh. Uh, Metal Gear Online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing. There's Guilty Gear. If you want to play Guilty Gear. I can't sort by like by system. That's annoying. Yeah, looks like you're only playing Metal Gear Solid 5, buddy. Unless you emulate. Unless you emulate. Yeah, unless you emulate Metal Gear Solid. Anyway. Uh, that's our advice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eric, I'm going since I am close. If you want the footage, let me know. Do Come. we remember what he's talking about? <laughs> no, he's he's talking about he's jerking off while he's watching the show. That's what that is. Oh. <laughs> so that sounds like I don't think that's our Eric. I think that's just a guy named Eric. Yeah. Uh, Simp Simpin Gaming. There's about 30 things you guys got wrong. Posted four days ago and has yet to list any of the mistakes you guys made. <laughs> <laughs> interesting yeah well we'll wait till next week when we get uh told what we, we get that doing. list yeah uh all right now we're in the chat with you people yeah talk uh, to us talk to us so we can uh talk back to you and then uh leave yes hey bob oh, would you recommend um, the gully kit king kong 2 controller says m skelton yes uh it is a very good controller uh it depends on what you want though i think it's a good controller it's a good like kind of pro controller replacement it's a good xbox feeling controller for the switch but also it has the hall sensing sticks and the clicky buttons the click it has clicky buttons mm. or, or or kind of clicky buttons built in uh they're, they're, they're made like keyboard switches and uh the halt sensing thumbsticks are nice. If you've ever gotten drift in a pro controller, this would hopefully prevent that. So I don't know if you want to, uh, the thing I got at the PO box. Oh, you know, that's not for unboxing. Uh, yeah, it, but, I was going to say, but I do shadow bender said, did you mention you have something to unbox? I actually do. Oh I yeah. Think. Uh, let me double check. 
Also, too, the thing that came in the P.O. box came in pieces, so I wouldn't even know how to like present it. It is pieces. Yeah. So, there's that. It's Bob pieces. is gone. It's pieces on purpose. Now. Yeah, I know. It, it's for a Steam Deck. It's a Steam Deck. It's, yeah. it's it's a new updated version of the of the Deck Mate. Yes. So this is from. Yep, retro modding. Retro modding. You know retro modding? Yes. They uh, now have a publishing arm. Oh. So they published a bunch of games. That's fancy. So I think I have a bunch of games here that they published. Come on. Uh, well, I'm on their website, and they have Pop-Tarts on the website because they made a Pop-Tart Game Boy. Oh, now they, I want pop -Tart. They, like, customized this. Hold on. This is, like, a whole thing. <laughs> Let's read what they have to say here. Uh, in cube games and retro modding. Okay. Uh, oddly enough, we are publishing new Game Boy games in 2022. Oh. Here is our lineup to date Be to ensure higher quality. All boxes, instructional books, game inserts, and posters are manufactured locally in Montreal. We also own our game pack mold and components. <laughs> no AliExpress bootleg PCB here. Oh, wait. PCBs are brand new, supplied by Australian company Inside Gadget. I've used them for cartridges myself. There you go. Most of the information below, you can find on our website at incube8games.com. But I've kind of sorted through them here. If you need the ROMs, just ask, and we will send them your way. Interesting. Uh, I'm just checking to see if there's embargo information. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Nope. All right. Uh, I'm going for it. There There's a go. lot of games here. Uh, look at this freaking... Look at this thing. Look at this. Uh, let me switch cameras. Oh, wow. I know. That is right? nice. But I just really just put a sticker on it. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it, but does it looks look nice. nice. It makes me feel good because I'm... Uh, yes. What do you call it? Uh, narcissistic? That's it. Uh, ooh. Deadiest Collector's Edition. Deadiest Collector's Edition. I guess this is just one game. I thought this is going to be all the games. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. Uh, ooh. Okay, damn. So this is a Game Boy box. <laughs> so this is a Game Boy game. So this is there's going to yeah. be a Game Boy cartridge in here. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I guess this would be the the art of. I'm like afraid to open this. This looks like it's pretty <laughs> legit. Um, there's a lot more here too. Wow. This is really cool. Uh, Very nice. What else? What else do we have? Uh, oh my god. Okay. More in cube game stuff. Okay. So these are cartridges. Gunship. So I guess this is what a cartridge would look like. Uh, uh, this yeah. is what a modern Game Boy cartridge is. So, you know, this is why on the Nintendo podcast when you said what was the last uh, NES game published, I was like. I yeah, like, I knew unfair. I, I knew I had to clarify that. Uh here's gunship on a, a game pack. Oh, I've seen that before. Game pack that, or gunship? That gunship. Uh and then there is also Wing Warriors. I'm not gonna open all these. Oh my god, there's eight games here. Some of these uh, on their website, some of these are Game Boy games, and some of them are Game Boy Color games. Deadiest, again. There you go. Uh, Pine Creek, The Machine, M Magic Panels. Uh, Genesis. I've seen Genesis before. Let me break these open. This is this is a lot of games that they... It looks like it's everything. Was it eight games? 
This is eight. Yeah, but then there's two more, and then yeah, I guess so. It's ten games because on their web, on their website they have eleven games listed. Well, they gave so me eleven. Have... They gave me eleven, but one of them is also a collector's edition, so I didn't include that in my in my I was count. Say, one of them, like they might have just given you their entire life. They did Genesis. I've seen before. This one I've seen for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a shmup. The Machine, Pine Creek, The Year After, Magic Panels, or any of these platformers. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Panels has platformer written all over. Sounds like a platformer. Instructo Tank. <laughs> so Magic Panels is a puzzle game. Uh, Dedius. Oh, it looks like a friggin' like point and click. Interesting. All right, well, I mean, I have this right here. What is this? This is stuff by InCube Games and Retro Modding. I'm popping it in my, my 8-bit do. Or no, no, that's not what this is. This is an analog pocket. Yes. Hey, Bob, uh, what is you... the best handheld emulator for PS1? Uh, the Miu Mini does ps1 but the best maybe a retroid pocket did i what now did you add a uh, snes and nes cores to that yet i did not whoa yeah. it's loud yeah <laughs> i'm playing gunship there you right? go gunship it's literally gunship there it is i'm playing a 2022 game boy game that is that is neat though. That Isn't is that something neat? that is cool. Yeah. Isn't that something? All right. Any other things in the chat we should be reading? Uh Mecha Dragon says, Hey Bob, I just realized you don't draw all the podcast anymore. How come? Because it takes too long. <laughs> it's also been like two years since I've done that. Yeah. This game is Wing Warriors. I'm trying another game here. This might be a Game Boy uh, Color game. Oh my god, so loud. <laughs> this is a Game Boy Color game. Yes. Oh, come on. I had a question I wanted to read, and now it's, it's another going. shmup. Here we go. Uh, Just Jordan says, the next 2D Mario game should be a Metroidvania. Hear me out. It can be done. Uh, it can it can be done. Massive connected map secrets, uh, power ups such as the Fire Mario boss battle, Bowser, etc. Uh, could even bring in a Cappy from Odyssey. What do you all think? So I uh, said the other day, I said that um, uh, I'm sick of roguelikes, but they should make yeah. a roguelike Mario game. <laughs> that would get me to that. That would get me to play it over and over again but i guess I that's kind of that. what mario maker is anyway yeah i mean a metroidvania mario game i i guess but like the thing about mario games is like every level is something new and the whole uh, like a big thing of metroidvanias is repeating the same level over and over again you know right so I don't know. I don't know if that would work, or they would have to do something really interesting with the well, concept. They, they need to reward you for playing the same level over and over again. Yeah. So what would that reward be? Is the question. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we got? I guess that's. I guess. I guess that's yeah. it. Yeah. Kirby in the terrible mirror style. I like it. I don't. I don't. Terrible mirror. The amazing was there? Game. Yeah, yeah. The was it was that not a good game? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the problem was? Is that game not good? Guess not. Uh, all right. I think we're good. I don't know much about the comics, but Dwayne Johnson is playing him in the new movie. What? Are we oh, someone about? was asking him to explain Black Adam. Uh, Black Adam is, or he was, a villain of Shazam the original Captain Marvel. Um, he was supposed to be appear in the Shazam movie, but 
when The Rock decided he wanted to play Black Adam, things changed. So now Black <laughs> Adam is no longer a villain. He's a badass anti-hero who doesn't play by your rules, man. And he's a big he's a big deal now. He's on the same level as Superman, even though he's never been on the same level as Superman. <laughs> um, but my favorite part about that movie, so this movie so far, I was never really like excited for it. But Pierce Brosnan, who plays Doctor Fate in the movie, like his interviews about it are fantastic. He does not give a shit. <laughs> about any of his stuff he's like yeah i'm playing dr fade it's a lot of like frou-frou dialogue i have to say but you gotta do it because it's just the job man oh my god i love him we must protect pierce brosnan at all costs anyway thanks for hanging out everybody thank, thank you for tuning here. in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf Den podcast is every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf then if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on the youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf Den podcast so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you could do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf Den podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms where am i going to put all this stuff from retro modding uh i'll be live uh thursday no i won't i don't know because it's Comic-Con day. Maybe yeah. I will. Who knows? I don't know. Shut up. You shut up. Uh, I'll try. I'll be live sometime this weekend. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, we're going to raid Thrill House now. He is playing uh, Metroid. He is playing Metroid, oh, I believe, Fusion? No, Zero Mission. Zero Mission. Ah. All right. Uh, right. we'll see y'all later. We'll see you at Comic Con this week yeah. uh, on Thursday if you're gonna be there. And uh, we, I mean, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about the Mario movie at some point. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.